Hello. I believe this video will have particular appeal to owners of older Lynn Sondek LP12s and turntable enthusiasts in general. So here I go again, Dave the Big Lynn fanboy. Initially, the plan was to make one longish video of the installation and my impressions of the Valhalla Electronics Zeus Speed Controller. But during the editing process, it dawned on me that there may be way too much stuff in it for a single episode. So I made the executive decision to split it into two separate videos. In part one, this video, I will provide general information about LP12 upgrades and explain why one may want to change their original stock Lin speed controller for a device like the Zeus. I will also tell you what I think of it and whether you should consider purchasing one for your LP12. In part two, you will get to view my experience installing the Zeus with all the dramatic twists and turns. Actually, it was pretty drama free, although I did make a couple of boo-boos. However, it was a very interesting process because I became even more intimately familiar with my LP12. In two previous videos, I've serviced and upgraded my late 1980s LP12. In the first one, I changed the three aging original springs and properly adjusted the suspension. And that went really well. The second video had me replacing the original sub-chassis, bearing, and sub-platter with more modern Lin components. That update definitely made a difference by tightening up the base and improving overall dynamics. The circus bearing and magic sub-chassis are manufactured to a higher standard of precision and rigidity than the original parts. The British or Scottish Lynn Sondek LP12 has been around since 1973, and over the past decades, it has not dramatically changed in appearance. Even a brand new model has the same dimensions as a 50 year old unit, which is really extraordinary and entirely unique to the LP12. And this is why they have their classic retro and timeless styling. It also enables Lynn to continue to offer modern upgrades and updates that can be retrofitted to your older model. Besides a variety of tone arms that can be used, there have been significant Lynn upgrades to its inner workings, like the bearing and arm board and sub-chassis and baseboard and electronics. This upgradability has also spawned an industry of third-party LP12 component designers who sell their own versions of replacement parts. And some of these sellers have seen shortcomings to the official Lin products and believe their designs improve upon them. Others offer more affordable alternatives to the more costly official Lin parts, and others add features that Lin does not offer. The LP12 was really the bee's knees when it came out, and I'm not going to address its somewhat controversial origin story. During the 1980s, it probably hit its peak of popularity in Britain and around the world. Many enthusiasts believed that it was the best turntable available at that time, and bought one, bought them in droves. And many continued to use them decades later, while keeping them up to date or in their original state. I couldn't afford one during the 1980s, and when I actually could, in the 1990s, I'd abandoned my record collection for CDs. But I found this one for sale a couple of years ago locally and got a pretty good deal on it. I've been really happy with my LP12. It's in great shape, and after I added a nice Audio-Technica moving coil cartridge and performed the recent upgrades, my records are sounding better than ever but it still has the original Valhalla speed controller board inside, which is performing fine. There's no issues there. And using my Puffin digital phono preamp to check the speed, it does run a tad fast at 
33.4 RPM. And there's no 45 RPM available with the Valhalla, so I can't play 45 RPM records, so I haven't bought any. The original Valhalla Speed Controller was in production for many years, but was eventually replaced by the Magic and then four generations of the external Lingo models. You may be asking, what does a Speed Controller do? The LP12 has an AC motor that rotates at a speed that is synchronized with the 50 Hz frequency of the power supply. The speed controller generates a stable reference frequency, which is the desired speed for the turntable. But they're not perfect, and many turntables, regardless of brand, do spin a bit fast, like mine does. The original Valhalla board was a was run for a long time, and it was a big improvement over the original power supply. But it has issues with running extremely hot and often burns out capacitors and resistors. And replacing those burnt out bits is a common repair. A lot of LP12 owners have gone for third party speed controllers to replace their aging Valhallas and to add the 45 RPM feature. And I seriously considered them but then I started to read very positive comments about a third-party speed controller called the Zeus. So I looked it up and learned that they were designed and sold by a company called Valhalla Electronics out of Liverpool in the United Kingdom. And they're called, they're confusingly called Valhalla Electronics because they started out by repairing old Lynn Valhalla boards. I was intrigued by the Zeus in particular, so I reached out to them and requested to see if I could try one out for a future video. Steve Cobham, the owner and chief engineer, was very enthusiastic and promptly shipped me one here in Florida. So what do you get for 445 pounds or 565 US dollars with the Zeus? You get the circuit board that functions as the speed controller and power supply the machined aluminum on-off switch with an OLED display, the speed sensor, a piece of black tape, four plastic standoffs, and a USB cable. What the Zeus has is a tachometer feature that monitors the actual speed of the platter and provides feedback to the motor to slow it down or speed it up in order to maintain a precise 33.33 or 45 RPM rotation. I suppose it's a bit of a smart device. And to get this feature in a Lin product, you have to upgrade to the Radical 2, which retails for $5,635. After you've completed the installation and have it connected to your Hi-Fi system, you press the button and it immediately wakes up and starts to spin the platter. The sensor checks the RPM once per evolution and using feedback makes adjustments. So it does take a few seconds to reach optimal 33.33 revolutions per minute. If you want to play a 45 RPM record, hold the button down for at least three seconds and it will speed up. To stop the platter, hold the button down for at least one second. It's simple once you know. The Zeus comes with a USB cable that you can plug into the circuit board and using a Windows laptop and an app called PID Tuning, you can customize the numerous settings to suit your preferences. Honestly, I have not attempted this process, primarily because I'm a Mac user and I don't own a Windows laptop. There are instructions for Mac users, but the steps required look like something that I'm not really inclined to do. The default settings are more than adequate for me, and I suspect for most other users. It's very cool that these options are available, and if you really like to geek out, then you can really go to town with this if you want. And if you live in the UK and buy a unit through one of their authorized dealers, they have the know-how to perform the fine-tuning and tweaks to the Zeus so you can get the most out of it. Who is this device for? I would say, if you have an LP12 with an aging or problematic speed controller, want the 45 RPM option without needing to remove the outer platter, putting the pulley adapter on and moving the belt, and appreciate the assurance of knowing 
that the platter is precisely rotating at 33.33 RPM, then the Zeus is for you. I've had the Zeus working for a few weeks and I'm exceedingly pleased with its performance. It's an outstanding and unique product and a fantastic value compared to what Lynn and other companies have to offer. Can I hear the difference with the Zeus compared to the original speed controller? Yes, I believe I can. Our brains are wired to detect minuscule changes in pitch. The speed accuracy of the lathes they use to cut lacquers is exceptionally precise. So it makes sense that playing records on a turntable that is similarly steady and exact is essential. My initial reaction playing the first record after the install was a sense that the music was more dynamic with cleaner instrument separation and a noticeably wider soundstage. Do I have any caveats? Well, seeing a lit up digital display on your classic LP12 may look a bit incongruous at first, especially if you're used to just seeing a black or orange switch there. To nitpick, I would prefer a larger rectangular flat button to the small, tiny cylindrical one and perhaps a warmer orange or red color to the display. This one is very stark, a very stark cool white. I know there's a practical reasons why it looks the way it does, but one can dream. So if this interests you, I highly recommend that you visit ValhallaElectronics.com and check out the Zeus as well as their other products and services. So that is my description and my impression of the Valhalla Electronics Zeus Speed Controller. And let me just reiterate, it's an excellent product which I highly recommend. I urge you now, if you haven't already, to please go to part two and watch the installation video and see how I do. If you enjoy what I do and are wondering, how can I support Dave and his channel? Well, that's super easy. First, go and hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I also have an Instagram at myown.devices. But if you're thinking, how can I support my own devices audio channel in a more meaningful and generous manner? Well, how about joining my Patreon for a mere $3 a month? And with that, you get early ad-free new videos and other stuff. The link is below. Now go back and watch part two. Thanks.